And we're back. So, I've got pretty much everything that we need to have into it. There's two more particles that we need to throw in here real quick. Let me uh, disable the lighting for a second so you guys can see. We've got all the animations done. We've got the particle, the heel plan particle into it. We've got it bookmarked where we want it to be. Um, unlike with the animation sets, you can't go into the channels in the clip editor and move them. I'm sure that there is an instance where you can. Uh, I'm not going to go through it right now because I'm not entirely sure. But uh, there's two more particles that I want to throw onto these models. And let's just... Let me do this real quick, too. I'm going to group these guys. Just select them. And group selected DAGs. And I'm actually going to come up here and rename it. And I'm just going to call it... Uh, I, yeah, I'll just call it set. That works. This these grouping functions are really handy whenever you get a lot of stuff in here and you don't want to have it all together. I'm gonna do the same thing with the particles. Uh, I'm gl so glad that Valve did this. I'm just gonna name this one particles. So that way everything's cleaned up. You notice that it's got cameras. Even whenever you spawn lights, it'll be spawned into a light group. So we're gonna go in here. Actually, I need to go back into the particle editor because I need to figure out which ones I need to be looking for so let me just kind of scrub through here I think it's bullet tracers nope uh, so many particles in this thing and not all of them are in places where you would expect uh, I think the way I did it before was I actually put a heavy into the game and recorded him. Muzzle flash, that's the one I'm looking for. I want the minigun one. And this one. Okay, so it's minigun, muzzle, constant. I'll switch back. I want to look for that one. And that one was under uh, muzzle flash. And then... Minigun, constant, constant. Where you at? Where you at? Do, 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 do. Constant, four. Constant, there we go. Same thing, we're going to do negative five, and ten, and ten, and ten, and ten. This one's only got one control point, so actually save me some time. I'm just going to control click onto that so that way I can find it. And I want to lock it onto it, and zero it. Uh, scrub out of the so that way we can see it. Uh, come over here. That's gonna look pretty good. Uh, I remember when I did this the first time, I actually had to go in and, and work on it a little bit to make it look good. But I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that that worked this time. So we go back into the particle editor. Now the one that I'm looking for now is called ejector brass. I thought it was in this one, but it's not. And we're going to go back in here and look. Look, 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 look. Uh, it's not in muzzle flash. It's not in... Shell ejector. There we go. That's the one. Eject brass. Okay. Let's open up a particle system. It was in... What's help? Shell ejection. Uh, okay, we'll do that. I get five, ten, ten, and I gotta find somewhere on the. It's gonna look good. So let's see. Let's see here. Uh, let's just pick joint hose one. That'll work. Up here, grab it. Zero it, and go back out, scrub, there we go. Now one thing I want to do, is I'm going to come over here and I want to move this so that it looks better, and scrub, there we go. And you can do that with particles, you can turn them, make them look better. Uh, I'm actually 
I am not going to turn that up because it will look bad. All right. Plus, whenever we put the render effects on this, this will be blurred. All right. So that's all we need to do as far as that is concerned. Now we can go in and start doing lighting. And sort of uh, <coughs> scrub through some of the stuff. And that looks good. Let's check on this. That looks good too. So, what I want to do, collapse this and put these guys into particles. And then, uh, let's go ahead and start putting light in. Alright, so I want one light. Just drag that into the viewport here so I can move it. I want one light. Oh, and the frame rate, the frame rate. One light looking forward. This is going to be the light coming from the muzzle here. And I'm going to... Oh, not that much. want something like that. I want it mainly on... Oops. Go back. Go back. I want it mainly on the medic. So I don't want a whole lot outside of that. All right. We're going to bring the intensity down a little bit. And come down here and change the colors. This is where the RGB table would come in handy. Uh, I know roughly what I want, so I'm just going to eyeball it. Take a little bit more blue out of it. I know that red and green will make an, a yellowish color. And maybe bring some of the red out. Something about like that right there. Alright, we're going to make this a volumetric light too, but I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, okay. So, we've got these controls for the light down here. Uh, we've got, oops, there they are, right, shadow attenuation. Which what that does is it tells the light not to let light go through anything that casts a shadow. So if we do that, it shores up all these dark areas. See if it's not on, it will actually little bit little la, 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 la. it'll let a little bit of light bleed through. We don't want that. We want these hard shadows. So we're gonna do that. We're also gonna decrease the filter size a little bit. And that will make these shadows a little bit sharper. If you go too far, let me see if I can find one that broke. Oh, crap. Not that one. I want this one. If you see how these see these artifacts right here, that's what they're called. These little artifacts where the the seams of the model are together. <coughs> if you turn the shadow filter size all the way down, it will bring up those artifacts. So if you back off a little bit, if you back off too much, it'll get fuzzy got to kind of find the happy medium. I usually go as far inward as I can. And that makes the shadows really sharp. So that's that light. And uh, I look for shadows. You need contrast. And the best way to get contrast is to make a light. And uh, it also helps with depth. You can tell that this is a three-dimensional object because it's casting shadows onto itself. But the other thing that you have to look out for is see how everything's starting to blend in. We're going to fix that in just a second. I'm just pointing it out now. And see also how his legs down here look relatively flat because you can't see any shadows on them. Everything's in shadow. And it's the same thing if you were put everything in light, too. Let me, let me show you that. If we were to come in here, can't tell you how many people I've seen just do this. They say it's lit. You know, you might turn the intensity down a little bit so it's, you can actually see him. You say, hey, it looks good. He's lit. I can see everything. It looks like crap. And the reason why it looks like crap is because you can't see any depth to him. He looks like he's 2D. Uh, 
I mean, you can see some of the curves in here, but there's there's no shadow reinforcing the fact that he's a three-dimensional object. So what we're going to do is, I'm just doing principal stuff right now, is I'm going to look at the Medigun here. I say Medigun, it's a minigun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to look at the Medigun here. I'm going to come over here kind of glance at it in the viewport. This is going to be a fairly localized light too. Other way, other way. We're going to make it fairly localized. Something about like, eh, maybe a little bit wider than that. I don't want it to go up too much past his arms because you won't see it. One other thing I want to point out on this other light, this one here, is you need to be able to switch back and forth between the animation, ed the motion editor and the animation editor or the clip editor and what that does is it will start rendering the stuff out and see how this is starting to look really sharp I can diffuse that light that's in I can diffuse some of this light a little bit by coming up here and turning the radius up if you turn it way up it will soften up a lot of these shadows it will also make it it will make light bend which light actually does bend it also creates a little bit of bouncing light like there it looks like there's a little bit of light that might be bouncing up here um, probably not going to go that much with the radius even though it does look good I'm going to back it off just a little bit that looks a little bit better I mean let me show you this is without radius and this is with radius. It's just a it's just a much clearer light. It looks a whole lot better. And not only that, but you're also starting to get um, some of the things you got to worry about. I see right there how that's getting a little bit fuzzy. That's because of motion blur. Um, I'm not terribly worried about it. You know, just stuff to keep an eye on. You get a little bit of it down here. That's just because of the radius. Uh, if I bring the radius back a little bit, those will start going away. Actually, if I bring the radius all the way up, it should go away completely. But yeah, you start getting these these artifacts here. Uh, probably not going to bring it up quite that much. Bring it somewhere around there. If it's a little fuzzy, that's fine, because, you know, this guy is moving after all. So, uh, I'm not terribly worried about it. Alright, so let's go back over here and finish this light up. Oops, I didn't want to do that. No, no, there. This viewport. Alright. So that's pretty much where I want it. Same thing, we're going to crank the attenuation up. And we're going to drop the shadow filter size. The radius is going to be up pretty high on this one. Uh, we're going to make this one pink. And the reason why we're going to make this one pink is because. Uh, that's pretty much what color the Medigun beam is. I want this to be reflected light from the Medigun, so we're going to drop the intensity down. Uh, something, something like that. Come down here, we're going to drop the green way down. And we're going to start dropping the blue. And that'll start making the light more pink. And what I'm looking for is a color that's pretty similar drop green. Let's just take green all the way out. Looking for a color that's pretty similar. It's probably too much, so start bringing the green back into it. And maybe start dropping the red down. That looks pretty good. So we'll come back over here and we'll just render it. And too much on the radius. So we'll come up here We'll drop the radius down to, yeah, about half. Come back and look at it. That's pretty good. Uh, bring the intensity back up. One of the things you got to remember is whenever you're, when you're bringing the radius and everything up like this, is that uh, it has a tendency to make the, to make the image darker, uh, which it's it's trying to do. So that looks pretty good that's about what I was wanting I think in in this one I made it too too bright and plus there's no hitting on the ground 
So, uh, wrong one, wrong one, there. All right, so we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna come back in here, and that light's done. We're gonna make a new light. Actually, let's delete that. I want to copy this light and paste in another one. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come down here and see if this will work. I want, blue is Z. Uh, you can do it in highs, high screw. We'll just do it this way. We'll take this light. No, we'll get the wrong light. Never mind. Okay. We're going to take this light. And we're going to come back here. And. Somewhere around where the muzzle is, something about like that. We're gonna make a, we're gonna make this sort of be a bounce light, so that it looks like this particle is actually making light onto him. We're not gonna make it quite that bright, so we're gonna bump the intensity down just a bit. I don't want a whole lot, I just want kind of a hinting of it. And the problem is, when you're dealing with light, white light will actually shine through all of this. So, <clears throat> to fix that, we have to bring back the, we have to make sure that the white light that's coming from this one up here doesn't come back. Because uh, even if I have a red light, shining down here on the ground. If I were to shine a white light on it, you would only be able to see the white light. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, color scales and stuff like that just because I don't know enough about it. I just know that white light will, 90 per will just about always show through. So we're going to leave it like that and go in here to the work camera. I'm going to grab this light here and I want to adjust the far Z attenuation and the reason why I want to do that is because I don't want all this shadow on the heavy because it looks bad so we're just going to grab it start bringing it back because we're going to light the heavy from a different angle um, you can do that with the maximum and minimum distance we're just going to leave it like that for right now okay so let me go back and glance at this so I can see, figure out what I did for lighting alright I remember when I made this the first time is that I had two lights behind these guys. So we're gonna make a new light. Drag that one over here. Put that into lights, so that way it's there. And come up here. And, oop, too far, too far. Uh, let's see. I want this to be a pretty wide light. I'm gonna use this light for a rim light. Uh, because it'll be easier. And kind of the area of influence here. I'm going to let this be a rim light for both of them because you can tell by these cones right here that there is a light there. Uh, try and get it to where it looks like it could possibly be coming from that. I'm going to turn it just a little bit. Do the same thing, shadow attenuation, that makes the shadow dark. Uh, bring the shadow filter size. And for these lights, I don't mind bringing the radius up a whole lot because that will actually diffuse some of these shadows down here. So we've got light coming from that that's on his arms. We've got a rim light all the way around him, so everything's standing out. Uh, we're going to put another light somewhere over in here that's going to be shining more on him so that way he's lit. Uh, I may have to put one more in front of it. There's whole theories, uh, tutorials out there about 180 degree lighting. If you haven't looked at them, you should. Um, they're really good tutorials, so look into them, especially if you want to learn lighting. Uh, I'm kind of following by that. If you figure that this one right here is 
if there was a line from here down, you know, I'm still within the 180 degree circle. Uh, I am going to break that, and I say I'm going to break that, I probably won't, but I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put another light that's shining down on him, that way he's got some light on him. Or I may come back this way, I haven't decided yet. It looks like I can probably get away with just bringing the intensity down, just so there's a little bit of a rim light on him. And that looks pretty good. So let's go over here. And I'm not looking for perfect. I'm just kind of showing you guys some stuff. Because if I wanted to, I could take hours and hours and hours and make these things look really, really good. But uh, considering that... By the way... Considering that my main goal for this was to was more or less to educate. I am going to kind of skimp a little bit on some things that I might otherwise go in and fix. So, now what I'm going to do with this light here is I'm putting shadows onto the front of the heavy. Crap. Putting shadows onto the front of the heavy. I'm going to make it look like this light that's on him is actually coming from this. I could have used this light to make the light to illuminate him, but what happens is, because this light is showing through the medic, it's putting shadows on him that I don't want. So, I back that light off so that it doesn't go, it doesn't actually emit onto the heavy. Um, and I'm just going to fool around a little bit and kind of move this light until I still want part of him to be in shadow. Uh, which, that looks pretty good, kind of bring the intensity down maybe bring it back onto his face a little bit I still want, I want this part right in here to be silhouetted because I've got rim lighting on there so I know it's breaking it up uh, same thing, shadow attenuation down, shadow filter size up and we're just going to bring the radius up just a bit and look and see how that looks too much. We're going to bring the intensity down some more. That looks alright. Uh, I want to change the color scale, so I'm going to come up here to this light, and I want to grab, I want to just select the RGBs, come down here, copy the samples, go, oops, go back into this light, which is light 5, and paste those samples, and now it's the same color and that will also help accent his color tone a little bit. It also makes him, it keeps him from being pasty white too. Uh, you can actually change his skin tone by changing uh, the color of the light. That's what I wanted to do. I want to dull him down. Because remember in this one, he's actually fairly small in the frame. He's a small fry now. The medic's the dude. So we're going to leave it like that. Alright, let me see if there's anything else. Let me just kind of glance through here and see if there's anything else that I might want to do. I think, I think for this light, which, yeah, that one, I'm going to pull the radius off. I'm just going to take the radius. If I do anything, I'm going to do very little, just to kind of fuzz it up. I want these shadows down here to be fairly hard. Um, got rim lighting here, got rim lighting there. Uh, I like this motion blur. This motion blur looks good. Uh, got a little bit of artifacts right here. Let me go to this first light and drop the radius down even more on it and make it sort of harder. Oops. I, gotta, I keep forgetting you got to do it in the motion set editor. Alright. That looks pretty good. Alright, so... 25 minutes worth of rambling and pretty close to the whole thing. One thing that I will emphasize, you can go into the camera and you can change the tone map scale so I can darken, if I go into the motion editor, I can actually darken this whole scene up if I want to. I don't want to. Uh, you can make it brighter too. You can make it so bright you can't even see. Uh, actually, what would that look like if I scaled it? You can't see anything. Alright, so let's just, let's just 
get out of that. Okay. So, I'm thinking one more video, we'll have it done. Uh, the next one will go through uh, changing the depth of field and everything and setting the camera up for rendering and uh, putting ambient occlusion into it and that'll be it. So, uh, I will see you guys in the next video.